So we're going to talk about everything in terms of chain link. And the reason we're going to do that is because if you can do chain link, you can do anything. The, reason, the thing that makes chain link more difficult is that we have multiple different size posts. So let's say we have a, a four inch post right here on each end. We'll kind of over exaggerate just a little bit. And then the next post in line is a two and three eighths. You can see that if we sight these in, these are in from the, they're going to be in because of the difference in diameter. So it makes it more difficult for us to sight off all the faces. Now, if you're in a, in an ag fence application and all of your posts are roughly six inches, but you guys run into taper issues as well. So if we're trying to sight off just the face, we can't line these up because we're everything to the, on chain link is lined up with the center of the fence line, not the face of the fence line. And that's so that you can deal with your different diameters of pipe. So what we end up having to do is we'll draw a, our four inch pipe here. So if I side off of this side of the post and I side off of this side of the, the same side of the next line post that's smaller in diameter, what I'll get is I'll end up getting a cross to where I have an X. And that cross keeps growing. It'll grow further and further so that when we're looking at our rabbit post, we're going to call this the rabbit. The rabbit? Is that how you spell rabbit, Hope? Close enough. If that's not how you spell rabbit, Nick, make sure you edit that. If you know how to spell rabbit, put it in the comments. If I spelled rabbit wrong, thank goodness I'm a fence builder. So anyhow, <laughs> so we're chasing the rabbit post. That looks right. I'm really worried about this. <laughs> and so what we're trying to do, if this post is centered on the fence line, what we'll see here is we'll see the same amount of gap here as we see here. If we don't see the same on both sides of each of one of those rabbit, on both sides of the rabbit post, the same air gap, then it's not centered up. So in this case, we see a little larger gap on this side than we do on this side, which means the rabbit post or this post here would need to come that way just a little, or actually this way just a little bit to shift that line so that that line comes further that way. Because ultimately what you want to see is the same gap between what you're looking at here. So if, if you're lining up and you can kind of see it, if it's, it's, it's hard to describe until you look at it, but you're just looking for that same air gap on both sides of the post. He's coming, oh, this is going to be good. So we're here at Sloop Farms. <laughs> funny Farm. <laughs> Sloop's Funny Farm. And uh, Sloop's dad had a, had a dairy farm, and so he, gets, he, he wants to get his steps in every day. So my understanding is, is that he, there's a piece of fence out by the road, and so he walks up and down the, this piece of fence. But that's just not good enough. He really, likes to, he really likes to interact with the traffic as it passes by, and so this is what he does. He has costumes. <laughs> that he wears and he will literally if you're driving down the road north carolina this is what you'll see if you time it just right <laughs> and he does have his we're safe he's got his corona mask on i got, I got my brain too you got your brain got your brain bucket where's your tin full hat today his cow so that's what you'll see if you just you'll know you're at the right place if you see this so anyhow that's what we're looking for now, if, if all your posts were the same size, what you'd see is more like what we have over <laughs> here. You'd just see, and it would, uh, everything, all the faces would line up. So if we had a six inch post here and it was a perfect six inch post, or we were doing all four inch posts, all of them would line up exactly. And so you wouldn't have this cross to where this, this side of this post and this side of this post actually shoot this way. And you can see how that ends up happening. Uh, so with that being said, you can see why it's extremely important when you're learning to backsight and whenever you're backsighting to look on not just on one side of the post, but look on both sides. The other thing we've found is, is that uh, people will try and change eyes. So they'll look on this side of the post with that eye and then switch eyes and look off the other side of the post. Keep the same eye for both sides of the post because it gives you an illusion and you don't necessarily see the same thing. So whichever, whichever eye you use, your dominant eye, just use it for both sides of the post. And so that's the basic principle. Now we'll get into uh, a little more advanced discussion um, because that's what we should see when we go out here and play with things. So it doesn't matter. Uh, 
let me back up just a little bit. The one thing you have to worry about is if you have a, you can run into challenges when you have, let's say this is a, a stretch post in the middle of a long run of chain link fence and they tell us we have to have a brace every 500 feet. I could actually have two and three eighths posts back here. And then once I put this post in the line, I can't see anything past it. So that makes it really difficult. I could line this one up this way and then I have to basically start my line over again and whenever this one lines up and then shoot to that one. If I want, I can just leave this post out, keep going down the line, set all these posts, and then after I get a few posts past here, I can come back and set that post right there in the middle of it so that I can see past it the whole time. That happens in gate openings and things like that. So a lot of times we'll go ahead and fence right, we'll use our, run all of our line posts right through the gate opening and then come back and do the two big gate posts. You're essentially setting a new rifle line, pretty much, what we call a rifle line. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's basically what you're doing is you're sighting this in like you would a rifle. Uh, so uh, a trick that I use, if I'm setting a line of fence posts, and let's say that's my terminal, and then I have a whole bunch of fence posts, and I have way down here, maybe this is, We'll flag these. Uh, we'll flag these with like orange surveyor's tape or something like that, and I'll show you where we flag those here in just a second. But we'll flag them with orange surveyor's tape just to make them easier for our eye to see, and so that we're seeing uh, the same thing on both sides. Now, when you come to this post and you line up this post and this post, what you'll actually end up seeing is what exactly what you'd expect, and this isn't right, but. What you'd end up seeing is you'd see a little bit of, it's actually gonna be like right here. So your line would line up, well, I can't draw, but your line, if you sighted down both sides of these two smaller posts, what you'd run into is you'd see no matter which side you look off of, you're gonna see a, you're gonna see a line where you run directly into that rabbit post. So we're trying to make sure that we see, if we wrap this in orange or fla flagging tape, then we'd wanna see the same amount of post on both sides so that we know we're still headed for the center of that post. And it's really easy to see when you go out there and you look at it, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So usually what you'll see when you're a long ways away is you'll see that maybe one side you line up perfectly and on the other side you see a bunch of flagging. And if that's the case, you just need to move your, basically lean your post. And it doesn't take a whole lot when you're a long ways away. So to get a line started, what I like to do is you could come in here and you could set this post and you could set this post. A lot of times we'll, the rabbit post, whichever one ends up being a rabbit post, we'll just lean it level or put it plumb up against the side of the hole um, so that it's not set in concrete and we don't have to move it later on because it might be a while before we get there. Uh, so we'll lean that up against the side of the hole and you could come back here and it takes a couple people because you'd have to set this one in the concrete and then you'd have to go back and have somebody move it one way or the other and get it just right and then slide it down the concrete perfectly and then once it's in the concrete they gotta plumb it up so that it's just right in lines you know so that we see that that sight picture that we're looking for down here and have the same gap what's easier to do is to set the second or third one in like this one if you have your X painted on the ground and you can kind of still see that, if you set that in the center of your X that you've painted to drill your hole, you set this one in there and then you come back to this one and you sight this one in from back behind it straight to that one, it's a lot easier to do a single person lineup that way than it is to set this one and then, have, then you have to have somebody hold that second post for you. So if you're a single person, and I, I like to do this even if I have guys, I'll set like the third line post in right in the center of my X and then come back and set this one and then I'll come back and set the terminal post and all that lines up now with my rabbit post dead on. Um, as you try and get the hang of this, it's going to be really important that you back sight, which means, uh, so I'll, I'll come down here and I'll set maybe four posts and then I'll come back to this one and I'll say, okay, does, does my line still line up here? Does it look good on both sides of it? And if it doesn't, I'll make slight adjustments in my line for the rest of the duration of the fence. And just know that the further you have to go still, the smaller the adjustment is gonna take. Just very, very small adjustments uh, to get back online. So you could be missing, it might look like you're missing the rabbit post by a foot, but it only takes a fraction of an inch to get back on it. You know, somebody can basically, rather than pull the post out and then reset it, it's easier sometimes just to lean it over and you'll find out that maybe your bubble's just barely touching one of the lines, which is within exception to us. 
uh, the acceptable limits. So don't get carried about carried away about pulling posts out. Maybe lean it over and find out how far it may be out of plumb before you go back and pull it and reset it. So that's how to, that's step one. Now for the advanced class, we'll cut this into a whole nother thing. And we'll talk about the other part of this, which is what people are really interested in.